Manchester United has been dealt a significant advantage in their pursuit of Jean-Claire Todibo from OGC Nice. Welcome to the United Hot Sport. My name is Web. Like and share. Subscribe as we get into this update concerning Manchester United now. Ineos have, uh, uh, according to reports coming through from the Independent, they are suggesting that Ineos are looking to sell OGC Nice. That is their club in France. This just shortly after it was confirmed that UEFA gave Man United or Ineos the green light to proceed to have two teams playing in Europe. That is both Manchester United and OGC Nish. Now, probably in their uh, submission, in their promise to UEFA to get them to allow them to do, probably it was because uh, perhaps they promised that they would put it up on sale because now they have acquired the bigger club, which uh, without a doubt, uh, Sajim Ratliff has always been looking for being a United supporter himself. From being from when he was a child, so the latest is that Nish uh, will be put up for sale. Now there are so many ways to look at this, guys. Uh, for some people, they will feel like uh, he has failed at Nish. They will feel like I mean this guy is coming in as a specialist in failure because Nish last season finished fifth. Yet this was the closest chance they had to play in the UEFA Champions League, but they struggled eventually and ended up finishing fifth in the French league. Uh, then seasons before that, they were sixth. At some, at some, sometimes they were, I think, ninth. So it, it's been a struggle. I think they, they've not finished anywhere beyond fourth position. Uh, so it shows you that they have not really had significant impact there. But Todipo, in recent interviews, has been saying that one of the things that Ineos changed when they took over at OGC Nish was the mentality, bringing the winning mentality at the team. Now, winning, again, is subjective. They have won certain matches. That is why they were, they were able to finish fifth. But and for if you're going to be called a win at Man United, you've got to win titles. Now, that's a bit of uh, the confusion. Now, speaking of winning, the reason I'm putting on this jersey is because uh, my native Uganda has beaten Botswana by a goal to nil. So if you're from Botswana, certainly uh, you won't be happy about this. But Uganda has won uh, a game, their first game at home in the uh, FIFA World Cup qualifiers. So uh, it, it, it was good, uh, a good result. But uh, going, and I saw in that game this boy called Travis Mutiaba, and I was thinking, how is Scott McTominay playing for Man United but not Travis Mutiaba? Don't abuse me. I'm just saying the boy is good. <laughs> Don't abuse me uh, for, for that comparison. But anyway, going back to the Man United talk. Uh, so uh, some people can say that uh, they have failed and they're giving up on the team. Of course, my theory is probably this is the promise they made to, to UEFA that, yes, we've got both of these clubs, but I allow them to play as we look for a buyer for OGC Nish. Probably that's the promise. And I mean, UEFA's aim is never to fail clubs but if you've given them the the your word or your your you, you've committed the, your commitment that you're going to sell one entity they can probably allow you to you know to play give them a few years and uh, see what goes on uh but the advantage in that is that if any if any are letting go of ogc niche it's like you are selling your your house or your property i think you should be able to have an advantage in terms of what things you want to pull out of it before you give it away to the next buyer so my thinking is if they are selling the club now, putting it up for sale, it will be easier for them to get all the good players in there, they feel, that they would want to keep for themselves. And if Todibo is one of those, it gives us a good advantage to get him. So for me, it's a good step in the right direction in our pursuit of Jean-Claire Todibo. It's, uh, I think, an advantage. Where it's now advantage United when it comes to signing Todibo. Even if teams like Spurs have been interested in him and confirmed himself, they spoke to him, I think the fact that Ineos are putting the team up for sale, if in any way they feel he's a player who fits the profile they want at Manchester United, they should have now a clear advantage and Spurs and any other club that would be interested in him should just give up honestly. If ever they felt there was a competition. But also, I think even the cost can go down. I actually think now more than ever, we can actually get to Diva for less than 35 million pounds. He was priced at about 35 to 40, 45, but I think even at 30, we can't be able to get him given the circumstances, because it's, it's you know, if you're selling and you, you, you want your best assets, you can take you know, whatever reasonable figure that can come. So I think, for me, that's an advantage uh, for Manchester United uh, to, 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 to be that uh, this club is being put up for sale. Now, uh, of course, people will go on and uh, analyze it and, and, and look into details and stuff. Now, I've put a poll up, guys, as we do count down to the decision on Eric Ten Hag's job, I've put a poll because reports have re-emerged, of course, talking about, talking about Gareth Southgate, talking about Mauricio Pochettino. Of course, Tokyo is silently there. So I'm asking you, of those three,
who do you think who would you think if at all Ineos were to choose if Ineos had to choose one and don't say no I don't want any of them if they have chosen which is a possibility if they have decided to let go of Eric Ten Hag and they are to choose from Pochettino Tokyo and uh, Gareth Southgate who would you go for I wanted to pick your mind on that because I've been trying to analyze all these managers by the way and if I have to choose one of the three, and I've been consistent saying for me, it's either Zidane or stick with Eric Ten Hag. But if Ineos have chosen to choose one of the three I've just spoken about, who of those three would they go for? I'll shock you with my choice. I'll shock you. First of all, for me, Tucho is out. So the debate would be between, the debate for me would be between two. If, again, don't get me twisted. If they, are cho they have chosen because they are closing in on making an announcement on Eric Ten Hag. Every day that passes, every minute, every hour, we're getting closer to that announcement. It can happen, can probably even happen before close of business, to, to, you, you, you know, tomorrow, you know, the next day. But if, again, if they have chosen to let go of Eric Ten Hag and they have to choose of, from T Tokyo, Pochettino, and Gareth Southgate, I personally have people don't like uh, 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 Pochettino but I actually don't I I rate him as a manager I think at Spurs they, he proved that he can be a good a, a good coach not even manager let me say coach because he probably has weaknesses in terms of managing personnel or, or, or has got a certain ego to him that might not be an issue but as a head coach if he can keep his head down and allow to be a head coach under the structure at Ineos I actually think he can create something close to what Mikel Ateta has created at, at, at Arsenal if he's given the time. Because one thing I like about Pochettino's style is he plays a beautiful game to watch. He coaches a beautiful game to watch. So I think if we have to choose of the three, I said Tucho for me is completely out. I would choose Pochettino for his football. Now, why Gary Southgate would be a second priority for me ahead of Tokyo is because Southgate, first, first of all, I personally think South, Southgate makes better use of Kobe Maino, the player whom I believe we have got to build Man United on, than Eric Ten Hag. And I'm not saying Southgate should take the job over Eric Ten Hag, but I'm now giving my, my reason why he would be number two behind Tokyo. If we are to choose out, out of those, I'm just saying, guys. Southgate, I feel, makes better use of our best player. That is one. Secondly, but also that's subject to debate. We've only seen him in a few games, honestly. The Euros will, will tell us whether he does or not. But I'm just, you know, just after the few games I say, I, I watched. But uh, secondly, the fact that we're trying to bring in Dan Ashworth and these two have worked together and built a nearly successful England team may be based on that and the fact that he's been a national team coach there is a bit of respect he can earn because issues at man united have been mostly players disrespecting managers and all there is a certain level of respect he can earn in england ah, maybe that as well but again again this is painfully if i had to choose if ineos announce themselves that they have sucked eric ten hag and they want to choose between those three that I've spoken about. That's my opinion. But I'll go back to the bottom line. I don't think if we are not getting Zinedine Zidane, Ineos should suck Eric Ten Hag. They can give him a further one year and give him a few things to improve on as a manager because he's not really the finished article. He has got areas that are glaring that he has got to improve to be better. One, he has got to be more dynamic as a manager. That is one. He has got to ease on his character, but I think by the virtue of the structure built around him, that he can do over time. Three, he has got to improve on his tactics. His substitutions at times are okay, at times they are not good. But again, he can tell you he had a lot of injuries, and maybe that is why some of his substitutions were out of what he had. So again, in that one year, we can get that benefit. But still, there are games I watched, and I'm thinking even on the bench, he could have made better decisions. But this one here can give us a, a better idea. Tell us that. Three, 
he should be able to create a playing template. Now with the structure in place, if they help him create the template for him, there is hope that he could be able to manage. The only disquiet I have with Eric Ten Hag is whether he can accept to work in such a structure where he's a head coach and not a manager. Given his clear uh, character, his clear personality, it might be difficult. But if he can humble himself and work as a head coach in a structure where he's supported, we can give him that one year and see what he does because the things that he has shown weaknesses in are clearly things he can improve, especially with the people around him now. So in yours, as you go into your, the last minutes of your decision, me as Web, my take is, if it's not Zinedine Zidane, keep him. If it's Zinedine Zidane, part ways with him. If not, keep him for a further one year, change the structure around him, help him in this summer, and let us see what he does next season. We will judge, even if and we don't expect him to win the Premier League or win the FA Cup again, but the performances from the start of the season will be enough for us to judge. We will see whether there is progress because one of the biggest issues that are causing people to call for his head is because we failed to have an identity. We didn't expect him to finish fourth probably, but at least have an identity as a team and all. So you cannot really keep blaming that on injuries. Maybe you failed to create the template. That's where we can, we, we can fault him. But still, we knew that he had the wrong players. So for that, for me, Ineos, one last time, I would say if it's not Zedin Zidane, keep the man. If you've chosen to sack him and you're choosing one of the three, I would go with Mauricio Pochettino. Meanwhile, Iceland is leading 1-0 against England. My name is Webb. This is the United Sport. Subscribe, like, and share. And enjoy Kobe Maino in case you're just watching this video right now as the game is going on. I'll catch you later.